And you know, I'm not a romantic about the ocean. Uh, you know, I was born on the ocean. Uh, my mother had to come in from outer islands for me to be born at the hospital through a storm. Some of the most miserable times in my life have been spent on the ocean. Uh, you know, mal de mer is the worst. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, when you grow up in the islands and the first uh, time you put on a snorkel and you see what coral reefs are and just the beauty of it all and it just you're so lucky to be alive on this planet when you see that. And so yeah, deep and abiding love for the ocean but never thought I would end up in such a role. Uh, look, I think before I was appointed as Envoy. When I was president of the General Assembly, I um, made it my business to ensure that the first UN Ocean Conference was held and that it was at such a level that it was like the crown and the, uh, the, the jewel in the crown of the uh, year that I presided over the UN General Assembly. So I think that really elevated the whole uh, attention to SDG 14. SDG 14, the Sustainable Development Goal, to conserve and sustainably use the ocean's resources. And I think from that time onwards, uh, the world has been very engaged in the need for ocean action. So I'd say that would be the moment. Being a grandfather is my central responsibility now. And it's, it is a, a heavy burden which you think about when you're in hotel rooms staring at the ceiling at 3 a.m. is, you know, what kind of life are your grandchildren gonna have? Because when we talk about three degrees global warming by the end of this century, that's their lives we're talking about. We're talking about vast insecurities of fire, famine, flood, storms, if we allow this to happen. So, uh, I think, you know, that, that's my, my main preoccupation, I, I, I say again, intergenerational justice. Uh, look, I, I just always tried to follow in my father's footsteps. He was uh, just a, uh, like me, basically a, a senior bureaucrat, uh, trying to do the right thing every day by, by the people, tried to do your duty, just followed in his footsteps. It led me to uh, being a political prisoner in Fiji after our second coup d'etat there, and I learnt uh, the joys of sleeping on the cement floor in an army cell. Uh, but uh, it's been a journey which, for which I have no regrets and many, many thanks uh, to give for where it's taken me, uh, because I have been allowed to live a life of service, which is what I set out to do from a young age. No, I would not do it differently. Uh, as I say, I've been very privileged by, I don't know what the process is of fate that leads uh, us, but interestingly, uh, uh, rural development was my passion. Uh, you know, putting in rural water supplies and uh, all sorts of, trying to take bright lights to the bush is what we used to call it in those days. But, um, you know, I think we were kind of swimming upstream in those days, because at the same time we were doing that, there was a movement all around the world which was starting then and which really uh, escalated in the 80s and 90s and into this century, uh, which was urbanization. And, you know, I just, uh, as a young man, I, I just wasn't thinking through the impacts of urbanization and what it means for people. You know, I'm a, a fifth generation Fijian, but my original ancestors were from Scotland, sailing captain who went out to Fiji. And you know, I think back to the process whereby they left their crofts up in the highlands and they came and they lived in and the, the urban centers of Glasgow and others and tough times, you know, when you come in from the countryside, it sometimes takes two or three generations before you can really find your way as a family. And so, you know, that's the process which you see all around the world now. And of course, migration adds to that as well. Uh, the, 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 the turmoil that people have to go through, the families have to go through, you know, it's, um, it's heartbreaking stuff. But I think all of our families have done that at some stage in our history. So that's why we must have empathy. 
And I think as a young guy, I just didn't foresee the, the level of urbanization that was going to occur in my lifetime. I think for young people, uh, I would say, you know, get your principles sorted out young, uh, you know, and then stick to your principles, you know, be true to yourself, as I said. So um, at this stage in human evolution, what is really important is that you're ruled by that principle of sustainability, because equity comes from that as well. So there is no point anymore in our species pursuing uh, finite resources on this planet in a linear fashion of just exploit, 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 throw away. I mean, that is a dead end street and we've come to realize that now. And so uh, you, you must dedicate yourselves as you go into the future to this principle of sustainability and the uh, realization that a, a circular way of living, transforming into that circular way of living is the only really sustainable future that we have.